Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to St. James and St. Brendan's Anglican Church for Sunday, January the 24th, 23rd, for our 4 p.m. praise and worship service. We acknowledge the land in which we gather on today is the traditional territory, first to the Neutral people, then the Haudenosaunee and the Anishinaabe people, many of whom continue to live and work here today. This territory is covered by the Upper Canada Treaties, the Niagara Purchase Treaty, and is within the land protected by the Dish with the One Spoon Wampum Agreement. Today, this gathering, home, this gathering place is home to many First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people. We are reminded that our great standard of living is directly related to Indigenous people's resources and their friendship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Our opening songs today are 10,000 Reasons and Heart of Worship. Sun comes up, it's a new day dawn. It's time to sing your song again. Forever may pass and whatever lies before me. Let me be seen. Oh, my soul, oh, my soul. 
When the music fades And all is stripped away And it's simply gone Longing just to bring Something that's a word That will bless your heart Let us pray. Almighty God, by grace alone you call us and accept us in your service. Strengthen us by your spirit and make us worthy of your call through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
The reading is from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit, we were all baptized in one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, and those members of the body that we think less honorable we clothe with greater honor, and our less respectable members are treated with greater respect. Whereas our most respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body. But the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now, you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But strive for the greater gifts. The word of the Lord. with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, turned to returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He be began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring, to, bring me to good news to the, has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. 
He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind and to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I speak to you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good afternoon, everyone. So today I'm going to do something that I don't normally do, and that is I'm actually going to preach on Paul's letter and not the Gospel. I want to talk to you about fitting in. Most of us want to fit in. We want to belong. As teenagers, that can be incredibly overwhelming and almost visceral. I don't know about you, but when I was a teenager, I can tell you honestly, I said and did things just so I could fit in to whatever group it was at the time. That desire to fit in and belong does not go away when we become adults. It might change, it might not be as deep or as desperate, but it's still there. And it can still get us into trouble. Example, about a week after my husband Michael became a police officer, we were in a car accident and we totaled our car. And the car was so old that the, the insurance was not enough for us to buy a new car. So we ended up going a few months before we could get one. A few of the older parishioners took pity, uh, parishioners, older officers, sorry, older officers took pity on young Michael and they offered to drive him to and from work. So, you know, of course, Michael said yes and he took them up on their um, offers. The thing you need to know about police officers, not saying all, but some, occasionally after work, like to go to the pub to have a pint. Unfortunately, the officers that were driving my husband back and forth liked to go every single night after work. The difficulty with this is that Michael wanted to fit in. Michael did not want to admit that we did not have the money for him to be going out every single night. Here he was, a young officer hanging out with much older, much wiser, supposedly, officers, listening to their stories and learning. However, Michael's desire to fit in was causing a little bit of grief and stress at home. This carried on for about three to four weeks until Easter Sunday. Easter, ah, uh, not Easter, yeah, Easter Sunday. Dinner was supposed to be around six. Michael said he would be home around six. I remember Matt was driving that night. Well, let's just say my husband got home around midnight and it was obvious that he had more than one drink on his breath. Over 30 years, I can tell you honestly, I have only put my foot down once or twice. Uh, this was definitely one of those nights. We did not have the money for this silliness, and at this stage of the game, I really did not care whether or not Michael fit in. So I told him basically to suck it up, start taking the bus enough, and after a good night's sleep, he agreed. Point being is that it doesn't matter what age we are and where we are in our life, we all want to fit in. We all want to be a part of something. Unfortunately, sometimes as hard as we try, we don't always click with everybody that we meet. And sometimes when we don't click, we get left on the outside looking in. And we can feel a little lonely or a little awkward. Well, here's the wonderful thing about being Christian. We never have to feel alone or awkward or be on the outside looking in. In Christianity, in the Anglican Church, this is a place where you will always truly belong. As believers in Christ, we have the privilege of knowing so much. We get to understand that we are created in God's image, that we are children of God, that God loves us no matter what, 
that God does not have hoops that he expects us to jump through to be a part of this family. There is an estimated 7.9 billion people on this planet. 2.4 billion are believers in Christ. Over 80 million are Anglicans. We belong to an incredibly large family with a multitude of brothers and sisters in Christ. This relationship and connection with others is because of Jesus, and it is incredibly deep and in eternal. In our second reading, Paul refers to this relationship as the body. Just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many are one body, and so it is with Christ. The body is an amazing creation. It is, it's completely united. No one ever thinks as their body as individual parts. You don't refer to your hand and consider it your body. It's, it's a part of your body. Every one of us is a big part of this beautiful, amazing family. And we need to try and remember that. We are connected. We are united as the body for a, a multitude of reasons. One, the fact that we're just here, we're breathing, we're alive, we're standing. Second, it is through our baptism. The Anglican Church of Canada reads, baptism is a coming into the body of Christ in which we become members of one another and of Christ. It is about who we are in Christ and whose we are, God's own. In baptism, we are gathered and sent forth in the ministry that is God's own ministry of trans transformation, reconciliation, healing, and salvation. Baptism is not just our, about our identity and belonging. It is about being sent in mission. Baptism is the sign of new life in Christ. Baptism unites us with Christ. Paul says in his letter to the Corinthians, by one spirit we are all baptized into one body. If we trust in Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we are given a place in his body. We get to be identified with him. Our unity is not just because we are all human. It's not just because we are all members of St. James and St. Brendan's. Our unity goes beyond this church and beyond these walls, beyond Port Colborn and beyond this country. We hear again from Paul, for in the one spirit we are all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free. We are all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. The prejudice, from my understanding, that used to exist between Jews and Gentiles was absolutely horrific. What Paul was trying to let the people know at that time was that there was no longer a separate church. It was one. He wanted them to know that all prejudice, all bias, all racism needed to be put aside because now we were one unified body. If we are to truly live into being the body of Christ, we need to understand that the church is a place of equality. It is a place where we can celebrate our unity, but also celebrate our differences because being different is a good thing. We all have our own special strengths and talents and gifts. How boring this world would be if we were all the exact same and thought the same way. As God's people, we are different and each of us has a very distinct role to play in this body. As members of this family, we all have a job to do. And instead of looking down on those who are different, we need to be honoring, celebrating those differences. We need to be raising people up and letting them know that this is where they belong. 
When a body is healthy, all the parts work together. All the parts may be different and they all may have different functions, but together they make the body strong and healthy and work together. We as a church are no different. We all have our different jobs and our different functions. And we cannot spend all our time focusing on one ministry or on one group of people. If our church is to grow and to blossom and to be strong and healthy, we need to be able to work together, to accept and love each other for who we are, and understand that God designed each of us for this wonderful, amazing family, just the way we are. At the end of the reading, we hear God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, and various kinds of tongues. We all have gifts and talents. What are yours? How are you contributing to the body of Christ? How are your gifts and talents being used? For they are meant to be used, and they are meant to be shared. It's how we demonstrate our love for each other and our gratitude towards God. And it's also by sharing our gifts with each other that we are able to understand and appreciate each other's uniqueness. And we can learn how to grow together and work together as one body. Some things I'd like you to think about for the rest of the evening and maybe throughout the week. How do you treat those that are different? How do you treat somebody who may have mental health issues or a disability or maybe an impairment? How do you treat someone of a different nationality, skin color, sexuality, gender, religion, age, or financial status? How do you treat somebody who just thinks differently than you? that one person who continuously questions you or challenges you. At the beginning of my sermon today, I said normally I preach on the gospel, and I do. I, I love preaching on the gospel. But when I read last, when I, last Sunday, when I read the readings for this week, as hard as I wanted to preach on the gospel, the Lord just kept pulling me to this reading. This is the reading that just kept eating at me day in and day out. Why? What does God want us to take from this? Is it just a reminder that we are different from each other and there is a purpose and a reason for that? Is it a reminder that being different is actually God's design? Something to think about and remember if you look down on someone because they're different than you. You are basically looking down on God, considering we're all in God's image. Do you really want to be that person? We are called by the power of the Blessed Trinity to embrace God's design and to show everyone love. On the front of our bulletin, it reads, whether you are a regular parishioner or a visitor today, none of us come to church by accident. No matter what joys or burdens or problems you bring this day, we pray that God's grace will touch and fill you with hope and commitment to live your life with peace, courage, compassion, and love. You decided to watch the service this afternoon. Thank you. Maybe that decision is going to help you realize that today you need to look at somebody differently. Maybe today you realize that you need to reach out a hand to someone to help create a healthier, stronger body of Christ. Or maybe today you've realized how absolutely amazing you are, that your design is perfect and that you really do belong to the body of Christ 
that you no longer have to be on the outside looking in because you are a child of God and God loves you no matter what, just the way you are. Amen. Let us be watchful at all times and pray for strength to stand with confidence before our Maker and Redeemer, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That God may bring us in his kingdom with judgment and mercy, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That we may seek him in the scriptures and recognize him in the breaking of the bread, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our parish this week, we ask God to watch over Norman Kelly, Eleanor Kendall, Tim and Leslie Kennedy, Sharon Kindry, Cecile King, Matt and Henrietta Kodatsky, Robert and Marlene Kresik, and their families. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, today we remember Joel Longfellow, a Port Colburn icon, a mainstay in our downtown and throughout our city, a beautiful, beautiful man with an incredible musical gift. And we know that he is regaling all in heaven with that gift as we speak. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask the Lord for prayers of healing for John Butt, Eleanor Sharuk, Mary Cullen, Blake Dayball, Elizabeth Ebert, Louise Hayton, Robert Kresick, Nancy Liskey, Dominic, Julia, Donna, Megan, Anthony, Tammy, and Derek. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear a prayer that the light of God's coming may dawn on all who live in darkness and in the shadow of death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That with all the saints in light, we may shine forth as lights of the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of our Heavenly Father. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful Father, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your wills and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. May the peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Peace be with you, everyone. Peace be with you at home. Thank you. 
The Lord is here. God's spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to offer thanks and praise. It is, an in, it is right indeed, ever living God, to give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ, your only Son. You are the source of all life and goodness. Through your eternal world, you have created all things from him. You have created all things from the beginning. When we sinned and turned away, you called us back to yourself and gave your son to share our human nature. He made the one perfect sacrifice for the sin of the world. Therefore, we proclaim your great and glorious name, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. On the night before he died, he took bread. And when he had given you thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, and when he had given you thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it to remember me. Therefore, loving God, recalling your great goodness to us in Christ, his suffering and death, his resurrection and ascension, and looking for him, looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate our redemption with this bread of life and this cup of salvation. We proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Send your Holy Spirit that these gifts of bread and wine, which we receive, may be to us the body and blood of Christ, that we filled with the Spirit's grace and power, may be renewed for the services, for the service of your kingdom, united in Christ with all who stand before you in earth and heaven. We worship you, O God, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing, honor, and glory are yours, here and everywhere, now and forever. Amen. At this time, I have two special people who are going to come to the front and help me with the Our Father. Miss Marley and Miss Margaret, please and thank you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Our kingdom come, I will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. And forgive us the, our trespasses as, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the power. For thine is the power, power and glory, and glory forever and ever, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Thank you, ladies. Good job. We break the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. God, here among us, light in the midst of us, bring us to light and life. These are the gifts of God. 
for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. My dear friends in Christ, for those of you who could not be here with us today, I invite you in this moment, wherever you may be, to receive Christ in communion with the saints and the gathering of God's people, unseen and yet present with us now. Many are made one. We receive you, Lord Jesus Christ, with the saints we worship you, with the angels we adore you, with your whole church we proclaim your reign. Come to us, though many, and make us one. Yeah. 
Uh, first and foremost, um, I would like to publicly thank everybody who's been putting stuff in the blessing box. Um, the response has been absolutely overwhelming, and I really, really do appreciate it. So does everybody here at St. Brendan's, St. James and St. Brendan's. Um, but I would also like to say an extra special thank you, an apology, really. Um, a lovely lady came last week. Uh, she had an envelope. Uh, in the envelope were two gift cards for Food Basics, and on the envelope were her name and, num or her, her, name and her address. Uh, and I was going to write you a personal thank you. I have the gift cards, lost the envelope. I'm sorry. Um, so whoever you are, thank you so much for your generosity. We greatly appreciate it. Two dates I need everybody to write on their calendars, please and thank you. Sunday, February the 27th, it is vestry time. Uh, as of right now, vestry will be via Zoom. Um, if you are a leader of a ministry, I ask that you have all your reports in no later than February 7th. Uh, for those of you who know people who do not have internet, so you know they can't watch online, we will be getting a local phone number again so they can you know, call into the Zoom so they can be a part of Vestry. Uh, when Vestry will, the actual time of Vestry on that Sunday, 
I need another week to figure out. I'll give you that uh, next week. My apologies. Uh, another date to mark down. Tuesday, March the 1st is Shrove Tuesday, Pancake Tuesday. And we will be doing a takeout pancake dinners. So mark that on your calendar. Uh, more details to come about you know, how you can order and how much everything's going to be. So uh, Tuesday, March the 1st, and Sunday, uh, February 27th are two dates you need to have on your calendar. Uh, last but not least, I'd like a little, I just want to update you a little on the sound system and the projector project. First of all, I would like to say thank you very much to everybody who has donated so far. We have raised $16,566, um, which is absolutely amazing, and I, I thank you for that. I've had a few people ask me why we need a new sound system, a new projector, like what's the purpose? Well, when we talk today, like my sermon today was about how the body needs to be whole, the body needs to be one so we can minister to many. Um, right now, our, our body's not whole. Um, our body's not in good working condition. Our projectors are broken. Our sound system is not the greatest. Um, so we need to make it whole. We, we need to put it together so we can minister not only to the people who are in the church when you are allowed to come into church, and I pray that will be soon, but we have a beautiful online uh, community, people who are watching who I have yet to have the privilege of meeting, and we would like to make your experience better. We also want all this stuff so that other people in the community will want to use our church for their meetings, for their weddings, for their gathering places. There are so many ways that this sound system and the new projector will enhance the way we do ministry. So I need to ask for your continued support on this. Uh, I also need to let you know, I mean, we are trying our best. We actually had put our name forward for a grant. Uh, it was for $20,000. If, if we had gotten it, we would have started the project this week. Um, but unfortunately, we didn't get it. So uh, again, I would just like to thank you for your generosity. If you, if you have donated and you want to donate again, thank you very much. If you haven't donated, maybe this could spark a, you know, a desire to. Or maybe if you are just one of those really creative people that can think of a great way, a fundraising way that we can raise the money, please just let me know because I would love to hear it. Uh, we will get it up and running, and it will be spectacular. Our closing hymn is Shine, Jesus, Shine. Set our hearts on fire.
Jesus. 